Hey everybody, um, this is Henry from That Not Spider Man Show, you know the podcast you're listening to. And before you go, you dive right in, you swing right into episode 8, I just wanted to like give you a little heads up about this episode. It's a good episode, I enjoyed recording it, and Jack did too. But unfortunately on our side we've had a couple of technical issues, that, that wizard, the wizard again fucked us. Got his little wand just covered in butter and just fucked us. And yeah, so this episode had a slight problem in that my computer just halfway through just decided that it couldn't handle processing the episode, recording the episode, and it didn't tell me until we were finished our recording. So all the way through there were little like, what they call dropouts, I'm doing the air quotes, you can't see it, but yeah, dropouts. And um, on that occasion it means that some of our footage, some of our great jokes were gone, lost to the world forever. I know I'm devastated too, but this is just a little heads up for you guys just to say that, yeah, like, we're sorry if the quality was affected, and yeah, like, I'm selling this thing for scrap metal tomorrow, I don't know if it can understand me, or if it's, like, a secret Decepticon, but either way, fuck you, you piece of shit, oh my god, what am I doing, I'm getting, I'm getting an animate object, guys, and I'm, 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 I'm cracking up, this is, this is not a good look for me, and, like, a podcast of increasingly not good looks for me, this is... This is bad. But yeah, this is just a little heads up on my side. I'm still a little bit frustrated at it, to be honest. And hopefully it won't affect the quality too much of things. But yeah, this is just a way of saying, sorry if it's fucky. I guess that's the word, right? Fucky? Yeah, fuck you. I'm sorry for fucking, fucking up the um, audio today. Yeah. Well, me? Sorry, a wizard. A wizard did it, not me. Anyway. Hope you enjoy episode 8. We certainly did of what we can remember and what we did. And yeah, stay true believing. Hi everybody, and welcome to yet another episode of That 90s Spider-Man Show, where two friends talk about The Greatest Showman, lots of comic movies, and sometimes the 90s com- Spider-Man series. My name's Henry, I'm your host today, and alongside me, he was bitten by a radioactive podcaster, it's Jack. <laughs> I was bitten by a radioactive Scott Ockerman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, you just stop fucking with that radiation, man, it just stop biting people as well, Scott Ockerman. Yeah, it didn't make me a good podcaster it just made me want to podcast yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no um yeah welcome to that night spider man show welcome to episode um eight now of the podcast and yeah we've been going through like each of the episodes seven times before if you've been paying attention and yeah this is episode eight and it's called the alien costume part one exactly yeah and like if i'm to imagine some of you will probably have an idea of what this is about but some of you are like wait what alien costume what's going on this one's, um, I don't know, it carries a lot of weight with it, because I feel like a lot of people know about this, but then if you don't, then it's like... What the hell's going on? Yeah. Um, and it's part of a saga that I feel, this is, in terms of, like, visual, in terms of adaptations of the comics, like, n- no one's really doing these as sagas. No. Like, we've seen it, we've seen this done in the movies in, in different ways. But it is something that makes more sense as a long-running, serialised uh, story mm-hmm. and uh, and that's what we get the first part on here. It's effectively a mystery at this point. Yeah. So which which kind of makes it a good introduction for it's anyone. Actually, very who's... compelling. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this is the part, the first part of the alien costume, and yeah, it's a bit of a whereas like ridiculous shit's been going on before. This is very like almost kind of scientific being an episode. Yeah, it's more of a sci-fi angle. Yeah. And it's um it's an inciting incident that's setting off all this stuff yeah. happening within the world, but for the most part, we've got. Something which is far more serious and drama focused than any of the episodes we've had before. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like, yeah, this is close. maybe the complete opposite of last week's episode. Oh god, yeah, with, with the Craven program. the Hunter. Yeah, yeah, which was just completely ridiculous and leaning into that. And uh, this is very serious, but not. I wouldn't say too serious. Too. There's moments of levity in it. Yeah, for sure. But like, yeah, much, yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> but um, before we we get too much into like completing thoughts, we should go through the episode so yeah space space stuff space the final frontier and also yeah the 
previous episode. The first one here of this episode, you could say. Is this the first appearance we've got of uh, John Jameson? It yeah. is indeed, yeah. Okay, so we've got uh, John Jameson is J. Jonah Jameson's son. Yeah. He's an astronaut, he's a NASA pilot, and we start off jumping right into it. He's on an asteroid. Just hopping around. Hopping around in space. He heads into a crater to get a rock sample. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you like, look at that camera like whoa? Uh, yeah, but I can't this in the podcast. No. Um. He he finds a rock that looks like obsidian. Yeah. And when he pulls it out of the earth, this black yeah. stuff starts to ooze out of it. This like weird liquid. Kind of comments that like the asteroid is bleeding. Which yeah, is... which is a really actually like kind of a creepy idea. Yeah, it's kind of gross. And, uh, and it also starts off an earthquake, so he runs back to his like lunar lander thing and heads back to the shuttle. Yeah. Then we come back to the bugle, where J. J. and Jameson, Robbie Robertson, and, and Peter, Peter Parker. Parker are hanging out. Uh, they're watching news footage of the this shuttle mission, presented by a guy who looks exactly like Ron Burgundy. Yeah, it's like, like, we're kind of expecting like Brickland Town to show up, like the, with the weather or something like that. Yeah, and this guy's really this guy's talking about how they've come back with this new isotope, which is the black rock he's pulled from yeah. the asteroid, which they've named Prometheum X. Prometheum X. And uh, it's apparently meant to be more powerful than plutonium. And this is a lot of information to get even before they've landed. Yeah. Uh, but this guy's already scaremongering and, and yeah. saying like, oh, it, it could, you know, be great for power or it could also like destroy us all. Yeah. Which seems a bit forward. It's a, it's a bit it's a bit extra. It's a bit like presumptuous. But yeah, so... Um... Everyone's watching this news feed, including the Kingpin and Alistair Smythe. And Kingpin's looking really, really like evil and plotty and he's like, are you listening to the Smythe? And Smythe's all like, yeah, bitch. Of course I'm listening to this shit. Yeah, and he's he's doing the proper like the uh the Mr. Burns excellent yeah. fingers. Excellent, he's yes. tenting his fingers. Yeah. At the same time we've got Eddie Brock who's trapped in traffic on George Washington Bridge. Just not catching a break. Which in any other episode could have just been like, let's just cut to Eddie Brooks' yeah. terrible life for like yeah. 30 seconds and then cut back and then yeah. it, he's not in it again. Will it be this time that he kills himself? <laughs> Find out next time. <laughs> but yeah. One thing I noticed about this, actually, when, like, J. Joe and Jameson and Robbie Bobson and Peter Parker are in the same, like, room, is that, like, you know how J. Joe and Jameson's very, like, what's the word? His head is up his own, own ass. And, like, he kind of has a moment to kind of gloat about it, and he's just like, oh, I just made him, he's the astronaut. And he's very, like, humble about it, which I found really weird. Yeah, he's very much, like, he has a lot of respect for his son and doesn't want to, like, take any credit for it whatsoever. Which is so unlike him. Uh, yeah, that, that happens in the comics as well. It's, like, his one, like, the one person that can kind of bring him back to Earth and, like, you Pun know... intended. Yeah, is, is the spaceman himself, <laughs> John, John Jameson. <laughs> but back in the episode, this news footage it immediately goes south. It starts, like, cutting out. Yeah. This black substance has, like, leaked out of the canister that it was held in and just, like, it starts attacking uh, the two astronauts... And they start plummeting towards the earth. Yeah. The news report's like, yeah, this is going to come down New York City. So Peter's like calling his aunt saying, like, hide in the basement. Kingpin's like, yeah, let's hide in... Let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah, let's get the fuck out of here. We're going to get fucking murdered by this uh, show. Um, but Alistair is like, no, nah, no, nah, I, I can see the trajectory. It's just going to come down on George Washington Bridge and it'll be fine. Yeah. People, millions of people will die, but we'll be fine. Like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. At which point, like, Kingpin's like, oh... Well, in that case, I'm calling my my man. Yeah. <laughs> my man, the rhino. Yeah. And we see uh, we see a first glimpse of the rhino. And for anyone who hasn't seen the rhino, or at least hasn't seen this, uh, iteration, this of the iteration of the rhino. The non-Paul Giamatti version of the rhino. Yeah, Paul Giamatti's version in uh, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is, like a, is kind of like this weird Power Rangers mech yeah. thing. Um, it's like a really like impractical running tank. Yeah, whereas... Um, this one, which is fairly close to the comic version, he it's like an actual like Halloween costume rhino skin tight suit. So skin tight. So it's this huge dude who's all grey. He's got a, like a gap in it for his face and for his breathing and stuff. Yeah, which you know actually like messes with the design quite a lot when you think yeah. of just having a human face stuck yeah. out of this. But then he's got the little 
rhino eyes on the side of his head <laughs> and then he's got like a, a horn he's got two horns top. two horns yeah yeah and it's incredibly skin tight to the point that you can see his ass crack yeah which is really weird and distracting there's so many ass cracks and em- embarrassing as well because yeah. he's meant to be like this tough guy he's got a wedgie all the time yeah and he's just Covered like a wedgie, man. people would be laughing at him constantly <laughs> yeah. it would be really What's hard not to but he, he's on the other end of this call and he gets like told to head down to the bridge and he's like, he has no idea what's going on. He's like, yeah. what meteor? What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. He's 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 not he's not watching the news. He can't guy. afford a TV. That's probably why. Yeah, he's just hanging out in an empty apartment with just a phone full in. costume. Just like, yeah, he's got nothing else to do. <laughs> His life is empty. He's been waiting for that camping call for like weeks. <laughs> he's so lonely. Uh, meanwhile, the news is that Rhino's not watching. Yeah. Uh, is saying that okay, this is probably going to head into the uh, Hudson River or something like that. Yeah. So Jameson's like, oh. Let's get our helicopter out and let's head out there. Yeah. Despite the fact that he's not really going to be able to do anything. Well, you think, yeah. But he, he heads out to try and stop it, well, which gives Peter the opportunity to change into his Spider-Man clothes and, and power himself. There. And so he does. And while that's happening, like Eddie is like hearing this all on the radio. He's going, oh, I sense this opportunity for mischief. Yeah, when they're saying, please abandon all your cars because you might be killed by a fiery shuttle heading right for you he's like nah, i want to get some photos yeah so he sticks around uh meanwhile the shuttle kind of comes into the city but yeah. ends up like narrowly missing skyscrapers and yeah. basically flying through the streets it's actually really cool actually because there's a little shot of like people like reacting to how you would react in that situation where they're kind of covering their ears because it's so loud and little things like that i thought it's a very like interesting detail yeah and, and that whole sequence from going through those buildings all the way to when it eventually crash lands on the George Washington Bridge is actually like really well like choreographed and shot very well choreographed yeah. yeah I thought it was actually like really well done and like, also like done it's well. like destructive as well but it's not like so over the top like, it's not like Man of Steel well I think if any movie like even like an MCU movie did it it would have clipped loads of buildings yeah. and then it, when it landed it would have taken down the entire like centre of the bridge and yeah. cars would be flying into yeah. the water and everything You'd have like a random like Stanley cameo where like he goes flying or something and like yeah he like picks up a child yeah. and like moves out of the way yeah. of a shuttle yeah <laughs> the speeding by <laughs> yeah so the child lands on the, uh, the on bridge. the bridge and sort of slides onto its side and it's kind of teetering on the edge at which point Spy Man arrives to uh, help out the astronauts yeah but when he gets there he realizes the door's already been ripped off. Uh, so he heads in, sees the astronauts knocked out, but before he can help them, he runs into the rhino. He's carrying the briefcase full of the Prometheum X. Yeah, and Spider-Man's not even like, oh, I have to stop you or anything. He's just like, who, who the hell are you? Yeah, who, who the hell are you? Yeah. What are you doing here? Yeah. But rhino's not really like answering any questions, and it just starts beating him up. He tries to like make a quip, but it's just bad. It just falls flat. Like He doesn't even mock him. He's just like, what? Yeah, and he really takes him down as well. Yeah, he like, the shit out of him. I mean, he kind of gets the drop on him. Yeah. But he also, like, really definitely beats him and gets him around the edge where he's effectively about to kill him. Yeah. But then uh, he gets the call through from Kingpin that's like, yeah, get out of yeah. there. So he's like, okay, well, I'll leave him and, yeah. I'll, and I'll run out of this place. But before he does that, he kind of, like, steps on him to say, like, yeah, I'm coming for you next time. Which gives him the opportunity, Spider-Man, I mean, to kind of, like, give a little tracer to him. Yeah, of course, yeah. He, sl- he slips one on the back of his leg as he's leaving. And then as he, uh, Rhino jumps out, Brock gets loads of shots of him running away with the briefcase. Yeah. So Spider-Man then kind of like is in, like he kind of recovers and saves the astronauts. Yeah, and he, he climbs in, he takes them out, and then he's sort of stood there thinking like, this is kind of great because I get... To like save Jane's son, he's going to be so grateful to me. Yeah, and, it, and there's no way in which this could possibly be seen as me doing anything back. So yeah. I just did something heroic because I was here at the right time. Yeah. But then he hears some noise coming from the inside of the shuttle. Uh, so he jumps back in thinking maybe someone else is in there or something yeah but he doesn't see anything but the his weight back in the shuttle like causes it to tip over tip over and it falls into the water leaving him like struggling to get out yeah and then while this is happening um the cavalry arrives yeah and uh john jameson is like talking to his dad and as he sort of recovers from consciousness he's just mumbling words about like uh yeah. some dark Black tar. Tar. Yeah. yeah and uh something something spider-man yeah. and jameson immediately is yeah. like hmm, spider-man? spider-man he must be doing something wrong and he must have something to do with this yeah and then brock makes this worse by coming up and being like 
Oh yeah, I just got like loads of photos of uh, Spider Man running away, stealing something. Just from straight the up shell. lying. Yeah, just straight up lying because we've seen him take all these photos of yeah. the Rhino doing that. Which you think there's no need to lie in this situation. Obviously, Jameson has a vested interest, but like a giant Rhino person running away after yeah. stealing something from a crashed space shuttle is a massive scoop. Yeah. Probably more so than Spider Man. Like Spider Man lives here. The Rhino Man doesn't live here, yeah. or as far as he knows. And like he his... just hangs out in, in his New Jersey <laughs> apartment on his own all the time. <laughs> he ran all the way from New Jersey just to like do a job. His commute is really great. Like, and um, yeah. So the funny thing about this for me is like Brock kind of leverages like these photos of Spider Man to get his old job back, but he doesn't actually have the photos. So he's like, yeah, like give me my old job back. I'll show you these photos. Knowing full well that he's fucked if he does. Maybe this is covered in the next episode or something, yeah. but I, I don't know where this is going exactly, but he must have some sort of plan as opposed to just getting his job back and then just, like, staring dumbly. Like, <laughs> uh, uh, I don't have the one thing I said I had. I'm uh, just getting immediately fired again. Yeah, I'm assuming there's something... Like, he's got some kind of plan. That. Yeah, probably. He's not that stupid. But yeah, like, this kind of, like, gets Jonah's Spider-Man boner just throbbing hard, and he's just like... I finally got that wall crawling sack of garbage, unbeknownst to Spider Man, who was just escaping the shuttle. Yeah, and he, he's uh, Spider Man's climbing up on the, the coast of the river, and in what was quite a good detail, he's got the black substance on him, but he immediately just sort of wipes it yeah. off. Like, oh, like the River Hudson. Yeah, like it's just like, which anyone who's like, well, not anyone, but like most people who have any kind of like canal or river mm-hmm. running through like a large metropolitan area, you know that, that that river is gross as hell. It's pretty much a giant sewer. Yeah, so <laughs> if you did drop in and got something like that on you, you wouldn't be like, whoa, it's an alien. You'd be like, like, yeah, I deserve this from yeah. being in this river. <laughs> oh, fuck, I shouldn't have done this. It's random garbage that I have on me. But yeah, he kind of just goes home. and yeah, He tries to track down Rhino using the tracer, but it's blocked off because... Rhino has entered into a much more secure yeah. building where... Spider-Man doesn't know that, but it turns out he's actually in like a very secure location. Yeah, um, where he's heading back to the Kingpin to hand over the isotope to him. And uh, Kingpin already has a buyer for the uh, isotope, so that's all set up in motion. So at this point, Kingpin kind of says, like, we have this buyer, but Spider-Man is like, we need more time to like investigate and like see what this thing's all about. How do I like show its demonstration? And Kimmy's just like, shut the fuck up, dude. And let me make my money. Let me get my bread. Mm. And then he cuts his Peter back at home, thinking he's saved the day. Yeah, he's he's pretty smug about it. He thinks that like when the news comes on, he's like, obviously Jameson's going to be eating his words because he's clearly saved the astronaut's life. But instead, when Aunt May turns the news report on, it's Jameson saying that Spider-Man's a menace, that he's stolen something. In his anger, he's promising a million dollars to anyone who captures Spider-Man. Yeah. Which is the complete opposite of what he wanted and uh, is a pretty shocking blow. It's also the plot of John Wick 3. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this this sets up a pretty unfair situation in which everyone wants, <laughs> wants a piece of Spider-Man yeah. after he just did something really good. Yeah. And unlike in John Wick, there's no like thing to point to of like, yeah. oh, I fucked up there. He it's, said he did a good thing and then he got fucked over for no reason. Yeah, and it's kind of rubbed in by Aunt May who was just so obviously like hating on Spider-Man. Yeah. But like proper in a... It does ring true in the same way that it, she's just so easily swayed by the medium which in the same way that many... People grand, of that age, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people's grandparents and parents and stuff would kind of roll their eyes in this, when their mum or their aunt or whatever starts talking about oh, those damn... Uh, Muslims, so, yeah, you know, or there's homosexuals, or there's liberals, just that general like right winged rumbling, I guess you call it. Yeah, and um, and uh, yeah, and I, I guess she's she's mad at Spy Man in the same way. Uh, she thinks that that his mask is a is a form of burqa, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> so she's getting extra aggro <laughs> about it. He's like a very elaborate Muslim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's sprucing it up a little. Yeah. It's like you guys didn't read this passage. No. <laughs> they it's say a you... whole different like level of the Quran. <laughs> and... Oh, that explains so much. That's why like JJ James has like this Hitler mustache because he's secretly like a massive racist. I don't think he's secretly anything. <laughs> but uh, yeah. this is all like frustrating to Peter who realises everyone's just assumed his guilt even though it doesn't make sense whatsoever which he calls 
the Spider-Man justice system, which is a very weird way of putting it, but like it has stuck in my brain ever since yeah. I've heard him say it. Spider-Man justice system, yeah. It's the Spider-Man justice system. Guilty until proven innocent. So he heads up to his room and he's kind of like annoyed, especially since he's like, as he says, he's like, finally I'm worth something, but I can't collect the money. I'm worth a million dollars, but I'm just going to get killed. Yeah. He can't turn himself in because then everyone will know that he's Spider-Man. But it's just... Yeah, unless there's some sort of loophole. Would yeah. that be worth it? <laughs> yeah. I'd be, I'd be vilified for the rest of my life. But I'd also be rich, so... Yeah. So I just want to do it in the end. So he throws his suit into the laundry and is like, well... Might as well lay low. Yeah, I'll just lay low for a bit. And he goes to sleep, at which point he starts to have a nightmare. And it's like, as far as like scenes in this show go so far... This is probably, like, the most artistic, the most, like, impressive, like, mm. visually. Yeah, the, um, so, it's, it's, it's really cool. It's I mean, really there's, cool. there's nothing even to make fun of, really. It's no. just that good. Yeah. But in this dream, well, in reality, this black liquid is on his suit. Yeah. And it's, like, crawling towards his bed. Yeah. And then in his sleep, he's sort of... Like, running away, like, in his pyjamas, like, yeah. out of the street. And uh, he's, he's in this desolate... New York City, this desolate city, yeah. and there's a giant shadowy like silhouette that's after him, and it's basically a giant monster that's reaching for him and grabbing him and trying to eat him. But then he's defended by this giant Spider-Man silhouette, like a giant Spider-Man suit. Yeah, but without anybody in it, just a, like, yeah, just empty, like an animated like empty suit. So it's like these two dimensional beings that are like start fighting over him and doing. Like, it's like a kaiju battle. It's like I was a gonna Godzilla. Say like Godzilla, yeah, yeah, and uh, and they're fighting and they're pushing each other into buildings. buildings. And behind them is like this pink sky and this yeah. like gigantic moon. It's really weird and like just an awesome visual. It's kind of insane, but in a really cool way. Yeah, I feel like a lot of the show maybe is constrained in some ways, like in its style, and then this just kind of goes all out on it. They had like they had like they kind of banked on one like scene in the show, like. We're gonna like do everything by the book, but we have to have this one scene. Yeah, and they kind of banks in the scene, and it fucking works. And um, at the end of it, we see the Spider-Man suit is beaten, and this black silhouette grabs him, and they kind of like a tug of war over Peter. The black one kind of takes it away. Yeah, and just swallows him whole. Yeah, at which point he wakes up, hanging upside down, looking at his own reflection in a in a building's window, and he's in a whole new suit now. He's in this black suit with a huge white spider insignia on yeah. the chest which many people will be more familiar with yeah although yeah we've never we've still never seen any form of that in the movies really no. well the like, whole scene kind of reminded me of the bit in Spider-Man 3 where a similar thing happens yeah they definitely do replicate the the same kind of like panel beats yeah of him him sort of coming to upside down looking at himself in the mirror and that being the sort of the tease of that movie of seeing yeah. his own reflection and and coming to terms with like, wait, who is this guy? That's me. Like, what am I doing? What's going on here? Which is a really cool mystery. Yeah. But before we can really take into account what's going on here, the police spot him and start chasing after him. For that million dollars. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he starts running away, at which point he realises that webbing is coming straight out of the suit yeah. and is coming up automatically like without him like, having to do anything it just knows instinctively that he has to like swing away yeah and he's more like powerful and agile like he swings and he like overshoots a building almost because yeah. he's just like so much stronger than before yeah so he's having a good time with this realising that all his powers have been like enhanced yeah because like, he's a bit stronger he can lift like a like a proper fire truck yeah and he, and he yeah so he lands in the street and then people immediately start, like, swarming him to try and attack him because they're like, ah, a million dollars, let's go get him. Yeah. Uh, And he fights them all off, hides away, lifts up the fire truck to test his powers. More people are shouting at him to say, like... He's behind the fire truck. Yeah, he's hiding over there. And um, and so he he crawls under and he he sort of says to himself, oh, it'll be really good to sort of get out of the situation to, like, have some kind of disguise, which point his suit just goes straight for it yeah Yeah, and it just like transforms into a police uniform for him and immediately he just wings it he's like yeah he went that away yeah and the police (laughs) run away uh, the opposite way like it's uh some like slapstick yeah uh, so some matter of like wadi coyote or something like that (laughs) (laughs) from this point you know he's feeling pretty good about himself and he heads over to empire state university that's the next day yeah was that the next day it's the next day yeah okay yeah so he, he heads to empire state university where he lands on a wall and while he's just stood on the side of the wall 
which is pretty conspicuous yeah. on the front of the building. He transforms into like different costumes that he's trying out. Like, you know what? My old duds are yeah. like not too great. So let's try something out. At which point he changes into... What oh, does he put it as? That guy from Aerosmith? Yeah, he, he just changes into... Uh, <laughs> he changes into Aerosmith attire to yeah. just try it out. At which point, like, immediately the guitar riff from the main <laughs> theme tune just starts playing. It echoes in the distance. Yeah, as, as, as he just, like, dresses up like this ridiculous rock star <laughs> on the side of the building. It was just really weird It's moment. genuinely amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and he thinks, no, that's probably too extra. And he just goes for a nice Italian suit instead. Yeah. Are you getting something ready? Yeah, I was getting something ready. Because, yeah, um, so the the Aerosmith thing isn't actually a coincidence. Yeah. So, looking it up, the actual opening to this TV show was actually performed by Joe Perry, who yeah. you guys may or may not know is the lead guitarist and occasional lead singer of Aerosmith. So, the story behind that is, like, he wants to go for the 67 series, the whole Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Yeah. And they couldn't get the rights for that. So, they wanted oh, really? too much money. Yeah, they wanted too much money for it. Oh shit! So they had to kind of like just they kind of just hired Joe Perry, and they were like, okay, we need to like play like a theme song, and it was actually it wasn't written by him, but he kind of performed it. They kind of got him in. They were like, yeah, give us a guitar solo, and yeah, if you can remember, like if you guys can remember the actual intro to the show, a lot of the shots have different levels of quality because they had to kind of piece it together through different shots. Yeah, and that some of them are more clear than others, and that's probably that's probably because some of the um, footage is from like the toy line commercials they had going on, and some of it's from the actual show. And there's a noticeable difference in the two different kinds of shots they had going on, and that's the reason why. It's because they kind of had this idea for what they wanted to do, and it just went to shit because they didn't have the money. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's weird how like the things that came out of like not having the money actually made it better. Yeah, in a way, especially the Aerosmith thing, because you think like having the the, the proper 60s like yeah. Spider-Man theme is good but at the same time like having a whole new thing which is like performed by one of the guys from Aerosmith that's pretty cool that's as well that's way better in fact that's way more that's gonna draw people in imagine being like a Spider-Man fan at the time and like hearing that as new you'd be like holy shit holy shit Aerosmith and then oh 1994 they're top, they're top of their game aren't they 1994 yeah oh I crazy. think so anyway yeah, yeah. Like the late 80s, early 90s, yeah. It's before like Armageddon, so they didn't have like the bullshit page of Aerosmith. And yeah, there's also the lyrics of the Spider-Man theme tune, which just goes Spider-Man, Spider-Man, radioactive Spider-Man, Spider-Blood, Spider-Blood, radioactive Spider-Blood. And then, yeah. That's a, that's a beautiful poem. It's a beautiful poem. Yeah. It's made me put tears to my eye a little bit. I'm a little bit emotional. And yeah, like there's also like a um, unused opening sequence they had like um, kind of played out. Oh, shit. Yeah, which is crazy. Like it's... um. Well, we haven't seen those, actually. I think it's actually really interesting because it's a completely different, like, than normal. Yeah, that's really expect. weird. Yeah. And there's a whole different, like, the way, like, the shots are, like, kind of framed. Mm. It's very different from what we had. But, yeah, that's just my two cents to add to it. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so we, we only get, like, a snippet of this guitar thing. It's like a... It's like a little reprise, yeah. Yeah, you, you like, oh, we almost missed it because we were laughing uh, so <laughs> much. It's just like, wait, what? He's dressed as Aerosmith now? Yeah. Uh, so you actually go replay it back actually and go, oh shit, that's actually the actual theme song. Peter Parker. <laughs> no, wait. How about that guy from Aerosmith? <laughs> uh, maybe something more traditional. He ends up going for that Italian suit instead, like just to look smart, and jumps down and immediately meets with uh, Felicia Hardy, who is pretty, you know, taken with his new look yeah. and he's kind of being a bit more confident. And she immediately notices, she's like, oh, yeah, you look different, Parker. But then also then Flash Thompson cuts in and he's kind of like, hey, why are you talking to my girl? Which she resists, like, hey, I'm not your girl. But then it just becomes this, like... This Big t- machismo thing. Like, yeah, you know, because like... I think she, he kind of reacts, Peter reacts uh, by being a bit more macho and a bit more, like, well, being an asshole. A bit more because, like, yeah. and then, like, Flash does this whole thing of, like, yeah, fuck off, Parker. And expects him to kind of just, like, shy away, but he doesn't. Yeah, it's it's like one of those moments of like, well, I've been taking this kind of shit from someone for too long, so I'm just going to throw it back at them. At which point he's kind of, this confidence kind of like, you know, throws him flat on his face because then Felicia's kind of keeping them apart and stopping them from fighting, but then she's also like, wait, you, you seem different. This is kind of really weird. and I'm, scary. Yeah, you're kind of scaring me right now. And she walks off, but he's not phased. He's kind of like, oh, who cares? I feel good about myself right now. Everything's great. Meanwhile, Smythe and Kingpin are plotting and uh, they know that they need to demonstrate the power of this isotope if they're going to sell it. 
Yeah. So he's like, well, I need some of these control rods. Need some more stolen shit to sell this stolen shit. Yeah. And uh, so Kingpin hires the rhino to steal the control rods. It's of expenses to New Jersey. Like I'm assuming he gets like the train there or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Back at Aunt May's house. Yeah. May and uh, Pia are having dinner and she's like fussing over him. Tells him to stay away from Spider-Man because he's dangerous. Now everyone's after him. He's going to be like a like a cornered animal. He starts right. like getting really irritated with her. Annoying. She's talking some mad shit. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he, he ends up getting like... I mean, he's having these mood swings anyway, but he's getting way more teenager Yeah. You know, he's getting more angsty and he's just like, you know, sort of storms out like, oh, I, I don't... I can't take any more of this yes. and slams the door and yeah. runs up to his room. <laughs> Art made us a really cool reaction shot. I'm like, oh, Peter, will I never? That's yeah. really great. Yeah, she's been pretty lucky so far that he's he's been a teen for so long and he's never, ever done anything where he's just been slightly rude or annoyed with yeah. her. He, one day he just snap, but he's just like, it's okay, Aunt May. We get that you're a little bit crazy, a little bit, like, prejudiced, but it's fine. <laughs> <sighs> that Aunt May. And today he's just like, fuck you, bitch. And he just gets up and he leaves. Yeah. Unfortunately, they didn't go with the original script where he says, fuck you, bitch. Yeah. Unfortunately. That's one of those things get edited out. But yeah, he goes up the stairs and he's in his room. Yeah. He's pretty upset, but then he gets, like, the little buzz of, like, his uh, spider tracer. So he's like, okay, well, at least I can take my anger out on uh, on this guy. Yeah. And uh, the rhino is now storming this, like, government repository where the control rods are, which he's going to steal for the, uh, uh, for Smythe and Kingpin. Yeah. Um, but as soon as he, like, finds them, Spider-Man comes in, like, slinking in through the shadows kind of creepily. Yeah. And, uh, immediately just overpowers him dominating him yeah completely and uh he overpowers him he sticks him horn first in the ground upside down and starts like spinning him around on the spot <laughs> right. being like well where where's the um, the prometheum x he doesn't care and he has like a blank expression throughout throughout all of it actually yeah. like he's spinning around so so fast and he's just got this blank expression <laughs> like oh, nope, i don't know but he's also like what was it? He's just like, oh, I'd rather be like, uh, I, I'd rather be in jail than be a snitch. To and which Spider Man says, like, you said anything about jail? Yeah, when he starts getting real creepy and yeah. starts like basically just threatening to murder him. Yeah. Uh, which kind of makes him look even. I think Rhino's a good choice for that because as like a very physically intimidating guy, he's like he's huge. He's so unnecessarily muscular. Like he's got yeah. like a twelve pack. Yeah. And each one of his pectoral muscles are just like quivering. Yeah, they're just they're so massive. Yeah, he looks uh, like Terry Crews. Yeah, he looks like zero percent body fat. Yeah, it's like inverted. Yeah, he's got negative body fat. I don't know why he wears a suit all the time because he's he's so muscular. Like it just kind of gets into all of his like six packs. He can't let you take it off. Yeah, that's why it's so tight around his butt. He can't even take it off. It's just stuck up his ass. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's. <laughs> Because he's got this, like, this whole thing, he's so muscular and intimidating, but then he's got this silly, like, head bit to the suit, yeah. and then he's, it's so tight around his ass, like, yeah. he's got this huge round ass, <laughs> with, like, this ass crack on chair, it's really weird. <laughs> like, he, like, sits down too hard, it's just gonna just rip open. Yeah, it, it's so strange, but uh, Spider-Man's just, like, threatens him, and he rips off this, like, massive steel door and holds it over his head. Like, like implying he's gonna kill him. That yeah, part. and Rhino's like begging for his life, and he just doesn't care. But then, Marvel starts getting these like flashbacks of other moments where he's kind of lashed out at people or acted differently throughout the episode. Clearly, like rethinking what's going on. At which point, Rhino opens his eyes to see that Spider-Man's just like left him completely alone. Yeah, and disappeared. Presumably, like I don't know whether like that's enough time for the police to arrive or something or not because wouldn't rhino just go like oh okay i guess he's gone and just grabbed those yeah, patrol rods that's what i was kind of thinking like you don't stop him getting the rods yeah could have webbed him up or something no. yeah exactly but yeah so he's just like left alone meanwhile spider-man like sort of swings away thinking to himself like wow i almost did something that i was going to regret for the rest of my life and yeah. i don't even know why i did it like where that anger came from and he, he goes to look at his reflection in a window and sees this flash of uh, what we know to be Venom's face. No mouth. It's like kind of got like his tongue and it's very like terrifying. Yeah, like these spiked teeth. It's like a twisted version 
of what he's got yeah. with like actual like pupils in them kind of yeah um at which point that's the end of the episode right what was that what's happening to me um so as we kind of discussed yeah like by far dramatically like the most compelling of the episode so far yeah i mean i'd say that it's um i mean i don't know how those other episodes are gonna go but as like a first part there's a lot of mystery in there it's really and knowing the comics and knowing other adaptations and stuff this is actually like a really good way of introing all this stuff and yeah they've clearly thought like they could have just gone the route of okay he gets the costume in some way and here's him here's him interacting uh with thugs or something while using the suit but they were like oh no let's just throw the rhino in there as well because again the rhino is like a cool character to have him fight but also isn't that compelling yeah. as a like maybe doesn't, doesn't... like a massive like, story arc or an introduction can just be there yeah he's just more of like a physical villain so like they can just throw him in there for this and it's a really like smart way of doing that and yeah. something i wish like the movies did a little bit more of. just trust the audience a bit more just go here's the villain yeah and it, they do it a little bit like you think like for instance um crossbones at the start of captain america civil war or uh Batrock the leaper in the winter soldier there's like a few things where they'll throw in a small villain yeah at the start but i think they should do more of that and be a bit more ballsy with it because i think you could literally inst- just throw in a stilt man and no well it was a bit of a shocker a little bit yeah but even he was like part of the plot and then carried on being a part of the plot yeah. as the film went on so with the rhino and amazing spider-man 2 yeah behind the first scene of the movie it was not completely garbage just kind yeah of- but I, I think you can go even further than that where yeah. they they intru- in the Amazing Spider-Man 2 they'll introduce the Rhino as a regular guy and give him a reason to dislike Spider-Man so that he can appear again at the end of the movie and then in sequels and stuff whereas I think that there's enough trust in the audience if he turned up as the Rhino at the start we'd buy it like if the like, last scene was the first scene yeah it's like you'd be like well this is a crazy world we're living in yeah. you know and you don't necessarily need all the character development for every single villain that's in it it's just a n- nice way of like showing like oh he's dealing with this kind of stuff all the time this yeah. is just a day in a life yeah and uh, i think it's a good way to integrate the rhino into this plot with for this sure. one so at the start of this show like it seemed like spider-man hadn't really seen anything weird he'd just been fighting thugs and stuff and now uh lizard man is yeah, yeah it's just like all this new stuff to him and uh it's like Apparently, Kingpin just had like a guy in a rhino suit just on, on just like on cool. cool. <laughs> just the gig economy just at its worst. Just like you know, he was waiting for ages for a job where like some of those zero contracts where you couldn't get like a sled job on the, the side. What well, also is like yeah. I, there probably aren't that many uses for the rhino in, even in crime. Yeah, because it's like not really subtle. Yeah, it's like do you need someone who's bulletproof and can run through like walls? It's like. No, we're, we're doing yeah. this racketeering scheme over yeah. here. I don't, I don't know if you're that useful. <laughs> Maybe like a big insurance scam. You could just run through buildings at own and get, like, collect the insurance money. I mean, honestly, why, why doesn't he just like work? Like if they paid him to work in construction, yeah, they wouldn't need any demolishing equipment. They're just like, well, you're super strong and you can destroy things. So- you could put people on his like, back and just run them around like an Uber. <laughs> like... <laughs> That's so destructive as an idea. Like, I don't... U- Uber themselves have, like, trouble, like, getting licensed in certain cities. I don't think they'll allow, like, a big rhino man <laughs> to, like, be running around destroying pavement. There's not really anything he can do then, is there? He's just kind of super impractical, like... Yeah. The rhino gig economy is fucked, man. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, fucking hell. Like, look at him. Like, he can't even afford furniture. It's just... <laughs> Sitting on the floor, like, yeah, where's my next job, man? Just a phone on the table. <laughs> he's about to have his phone bill cut off because he can't afford anything. Shit. It's yeah, depressing. like, what's he gonna do? Like, he has to unionize. That's the only thing he can do. It's just, yeah. Yeah, like, he should unionize. Yeah, like, get like a rhino union going. Like, well, he, he doesn't just need <laughs> rhino people. He can unionize with other people. <laughs> I mean, otherwise, yeah, there's, there's no point. It's, it's just like, yeah, one man union. <laughs> <laughs> Just presumably be a rhino, that rhino guy, for <laughs> him to unionize. Henry's never unionized at his work because there's no one that has the same name. Yeah, as me. otherwise, what's the point? <laughs> That's Henry's got to stick together. Yeah, you know, his name is Harry. It's not close enough. I've got to, I've got to go again. Sorry, man. But no. In the comics, well, we get no origin with him here. 
gets like overcome at the end yeah which is kind of a really cool use of him but in the original comic he's much more like intimidating and he actually gets like he's not just like a one and done like in okay. the same way that many of those early villains were like craven or scorpion or whatever just like, by the end of the comic. yeah they, they got that origin and then they were taken out whereas the rhino is actually given like a free part arc whoa yeah That's... and it does involve other stuff but funnily enough it actually also involves john james okay so it's kind of interesting this this episode is very impressive in a lot of ways because it does bring in like quite a lot of different storylines from the comics but then mixes them into like a something that's way more way more streamlined more concise concise yeah and um in the original issue uh it's kind of set up in a almost a different way but basically in the amazing spider-man 41 41 which is in 1966 okay this is the same issue which I, I I previously mentioned this ages ago when we were talking about whether J. Jonah Jameson was a good person or not, and I yeah. used this as, to cite him as a very bad person. <laughs> this, so this is the one where Peter is buying a motorcycle, uh, okay. and and he needs to he needs to get a loan to buy it. So he need he needs a reference for the loan, and Jonah's gonna say no, but then has the thought to himself: if he has a debt to pay off, he'd have to sell me more pictures. And I could buy him cheaper than I ever from him. <laughs> Which is such an evil such scheme. Such a scumbag. But um, as this issue goes on, John is visiting his father. He's just come back from a space flight. Yeah. And uh, he's just offhand mentions like, oh yeah, I was infected with these space spores. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think they, they were like, they put him under all these tests and stuff, but they were like, okay, well, you're not contagious or anything, but we still want to check on you so he has these agents following him around all the time and they're like something's up with this guy meanwhile in mexico oh. well they don't say mexico but they say the southernmost border of the country oh god the rhino is just running through the desert and he gets to like border control and oh he just god. and he just runs through like he, he just like <laughs> There's no wall for him to, like, smash down. Oh, but, damn. But he just... Uh, it wouldn't have mattered. It wouldn't have mattered because people always get around walls, yeah. especially rhino people. They just run through them. Yeah, so he, he just... Um, that's, what, that's what we need for, like, the Democrats need for 2020 is a rhino person to run through Donald Trump's wall. <laughs> My wall will keep out all the rhino people from their country. <laughs> that, that was weird. I mean, it was, like, half there. It kind of came, came went in and went out again. Yeah. I've never tried a Donald Trump accent before, yeah. like, properly, and I need to, like, tune up. I feel like something there. But, yeah, some... Go, sorry, go on. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rhino is just running... He just runs from Mexico into the US. There's just this border control outpost. They try to shoot him. He's bulletproof. He seems unstoppable. And Peter sees a news report that he's heading to, to New York. So... I don't know if he's just like he's running in that in that general direction, or he's just so fast he's just like turning up. He's like, oh shit, he's already in New York State. Or he's just yelling, "I'm going to New York," and people will hear him and they'll be like, "Oh shit, I guess he's going to New York. <laughs> <laughs> I could really use a bagel right now. <laughs> I want to see the Empire State Building." <laughs> The weird thing is, they set this up of him running the whole way, but then the next time you see him, they're in a, this railroad yard, and he just, like, bursts out of, like, a <laughs> train uh, carriage and just, like, starts fighting everyone again. Uh, but okay. I, ge I guess he just got tired at some point and just got on the train. Just took a nap. <laughs> He's yeah. like, fuck, this is actually a, a long way to fucking run, man. We got lost, he has all the directions to New York. <laughs> <laughs> then he, he, uh, he ends up, he runs and he basically kidnaps john jameson like breaks and steals him runs away why does uh, he kidnap john jameson well the, it's, it's kind of unclear <laughs> well he he has those alien spores in him and it's the 60s so the space stuff is like super important space rice is a big thing yeah they want the, okay. they want the spores and so R rhino they don't explicitly say who he's working for but unlike in the show rhino isn't from new jersey he's from russia which makes, you know, this makes more sense, right? Because in the show, he keeps saying, he keeps saying, oh, I'm from New Jersey or whatever. And yeah. he's got that accent. So you think, like, why would that guy be in Mexico? But in yeah. this, I mean, his name, his name is Alexei Sitsevich. Sitsevich, okay. So, yeah, he, he's definitely Russian. And they never, like, deviate from that. He's always Russian. So like, the show just went, uh, New it. Jersey. Yeah. Of course, we had a 
the Russian in uh, Craven the Hunter yeah. last week. Got to every villain be Russian. And uh, you, you, I mean, this you think Spider Man's bad for it. You, you check out those uh, Iron Man comics. <laughs> Everyone's Russian or Chinese. <laughs> uh, yeah. Man. But in this one, presumably he's he's taking John John Jameson for the sports. He's kidnapping him on yeah. someone's behalf, and he is then attacked by Spider Man, who tries to save his life. And he's pretty formidable, and uh, Spider Man like can barely like do anything to him. Okay, like in punching him, he's taken out pretty easily. But eventually, he takes him out in like this like pretty bu- brutal move where he like um, he just like you know the like the Black Widow leg grapple thing she, yeah. she always does where she. She like jumps like wraps a leg around your neck and kind of swings around. Almost. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and he uh, he does that to Rhino, but then spins him upside down, slams his head into the ground, Ugh. and knocks him out. And then they arrest him, but as the police uh, take him away, they're like, "Well, we can't actually remove this suit. It, we can't take it off him. We can't like sedate him Without or anything it. because like his skin is unbreakable." Like the skin, even regardless of the, the your suit, like his actual skin. They say that, but maybe they're just dumb and they're not trying the big the big space yeah. where his uh, face is. They're just not trying. You can't just like syringe him in the face, can you? Can you do that? Be specific vein. It's not like a video game. No. So this is like in um, my my arm has been chopped off. I'll use this first aid spray on my face, <laughs> and I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. Well, th- th- that's the end of issue forty one. Sorted. Bit apprehended. But with like a lot of loose ends. And then 42 isn't really a rhino issue. Instead, uh, those spores from space give John Jameson superhuman strength. Oh, God. But he becomes sort of emotionally unstable as well, and he starts running around. Like, there's this whole misunderstanding where everyone thinks that Spider-Man's robbed a bank when he hasn't, so he ends up going after Spider-Man, fighting him. Meanwhile, a scientist is like, trying to remove the rhino suit, and he can't. So eventually they gas him with like this tranquilizer gas okay. thing to get him to go to sleep. And uh, Spider-Man fights and uh, defeats John Jameson. And then at the end of that issue is when uh, Peter meets Mary Jane for the first time. Oh, shit. So there's a load of crazy events at once. But he meets uh, Mary Jane. She does the whole face of tiger. Hit the jackpot kind of thing. Yeah, she yeah. does that whole line. And then at the start of the next issue, issue 43, the tranquilizers have worn off. And the rhino just like crashes out of his cell. Uh, this time, like, oh, I'm just going to go and murder Spider-Man. And uh, I, it's a bit confusing why, like, if they, like, figure out, like, oh, gassing him works, why, why they just, like, they're like, oh, no, the gas wore off. They, uh, didn't, they didn't just try and, I don't know, like, keep doing it. Like, maybe they ran out of gas. That was the last of their gas. Yeah, it seems like they gassed him and they're like, wow. Glad and that's over. Yeah, and they just sort of sat there for 12 hours <laughs> and then suddenly he broke out and they're like, oh, shit. shit. <laughs> oh, fuck. Jerry, <laughs> Jerry, were you meant to gas the dangerous rhino man? No one paid the gas bill and now he's out. God, the boss is never gonna like, let us hear the end of this. I think that's something which isn't really thought of in a lot of the story. So when you have someone, you make a big deal about them being like an unstoppable villain yeah. and then they're just caught by the police. It's like, wait, yeah, but how do they actually hold them? Because yeah. this whole thing, like throughout all these issues, they're like, immediately after they capture him, everyone's freaking out. Like, how do we keep hold of him? Yeah. And then they just can't. Yeah. <laughs> Like, the MYB didn't have the budget for that, like... Yeah, exactly. And uh, it's both. They put him in a cell. It's just, like, a regular cell. Yeah. They haven't got, like, some fancy, like, science thing to, like... He's next to, like, him. a drunk homeless man or something like that. Yeah, they just put him in the drunk tank, yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Peter's, like, infatuated with Mary Jane and is talking to her, but then he sees a news report with Rhino and he's thinking, oh, fuck, this is one of those situations where I have to, like... D- yeah. make an excuse even though I actually want to be here but before you can even make an excuse Mary Jane's the one who's like yeah that would be cool because and she speaks in this like ridiculous like yeah. 60s slang and she's like it'd be a kick to see the rhino in person and then also says that they should go because quote I'll bet the rhino is a real swinger <laughs> which I does she want to fuck the rhino <laughs> I don't know maybe but they head they head out um to go find a rhino together. Oh, how um, romantic! Yeah, and uh, meanwhile the rhino uh, flashes back to his origin, <laughs> where you find out and he's a, he's a very confusing origin. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's not like the level of like uh, like the kangaroo. Oh, uh, nothing which, could be that level. Which everyone should. What was that episode two? I think it was episode two. Yeah. Alexi was just like some regular like fuck. Just two spies come up to him. But they make sure to say that they're not affiliated with any country, just whoever's going to pay them the most. <laughs> but then uh, they kind of immediately like treat him like shit. 
Which is a really common thing in Spider-Man villains. Yeah. <laughs> this is just... like emotionally abused people. Yeah, exactly. Goes beyond their limits. Like, this one guy says it's such a like this insulting thing. He goes, "My associates think you are too stupid to be trusted," <laughs> but I disagree. I feel your very lack of intelligence will prevent you from ever betraying us. <laughs> You're too stupid to betray us, aren't you? Like a little puppy. <laughs> Yeah, he like he like even like um he sets it up as if he's like I don't think you're stupid, but then just go. Like, I, oh, I, I do think you're stupid. I, I believe in how stupid you are. I'm gonna use your stupidity. They don't believe your stupidity is useful, but I do. And it's like you think as well, like this will set him up to be like, ah, oh, well, I'm gonna betray you yeah. now. But it, there's even a wrinkle in that. But basically, um, he's too stupid to even take advantage of that. He's like, well, how do we get back at them? Well, Alexi's just like, I don't give a shit. He's like, just pay me. I'm just here to get paid. I don't care what you're saying, how much you're insulting me. So just put him through this experiment. <laughs> <laughs> and it, the way they put it is they add a molecular adhesive that forms a second skin. Okay. Which is just basically they're sticking him, they're sticking this like rhino, this artificial skin on him. Okay. But also just making it look like a rhino because why not? Fuck yeah, why not? And they make him super strong and all this stuff. They also, like, permanently attached, like, the, the second skin is, like, permanently, like, attached to him. Wait, so how does he pee, then? Or, like, have any kind of bodily functions? Like... Uh, maybe there's a flap. I hope there's a flap. Jesus, because, like, yeah, like, you can't sweat, you can't do anything. And, like, we already kind of established last episode that the scorpion is the same kind of thing, where he's just smashing yeah. a chemical sweat all the time. Yeah, it's the same situation. Like, that... all, <laughs> all these Spider-Man villains are just stinky Spider-Man villains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a weird common thread. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's me. <laughs> but <laughs> the thing is, you know when they say like, "Okay, you're too stupid to betray us." Yeah, Rhino does betray them. Uh, but you think like it might be a revenge of like you thought I was stupid or whatever. Yeah. But they're actually right because he <laughs> says he says that ah, you didn't suspect that my intelligence increased during this experiment yeah. as well. So now I can betray you. Yeah. <laughs> So he's still like, they were still right about yeah. him being too stupid. Uh, so he just runs away. And then that whole bit is kind of over. It's just like, oh, like now he just sells his services to the highest bidder. Uh, and he destroys that whole facility. So presumably they can't do it again with another guy. I mean, like, if you're going to make a rhino man, make your equipment rhino proof. That's not the first thing you do. Yeah. What if just, this goes wrong? Well, just like... Yeah, I, I don't know, just like, it feels weird to like do all that experimentation and then your test subject is like, hey, just that guy. Let's choose that guy. And then before you even do the experiment, be like, hey, piece of shit. Hey, piece you're, of shit. You're fucking dumb. You'd never betray us, would you? And then like, give him, stupid. And then give him spider, uh, spider power, give him rhino powers. Well, how could this possibly go wrong? <laughs> just install him to the face and make him super strong. You also think, is this the first... Out of the ones we've discussed on this show so far, yeah. is this the first animal themed spy man villain that kind of like is actually scary? Like in terms of the animal to choose. Like there's been a scorpion and an octopus. And a and a kangaroo and a gibbon. Well like, you wouldn't want to fight a kangaroo, but like, Yeah. I mean a rhino would fuck you up. Yeah, you it'll like, uh, kill you. A rhino looks cool and could fuck you up, but they like make him look stupid? This dude, we have him a dumb costume because we hate him. But the thing is, it's like it's the face thing. Because if they if they didn't have if that face was covered and his head lo- looked like a, he just looked like a humanoid rhino. That would be weird, but it would also be kind of I don't know, maybe more threatening than when you see like a face in the middle. It's that Halloween costume principle where like if you're going to go for an animal costume, you either go for the whole head of an animal, or you go for like the ears or something. Otherwise, yeah. it looks like an animal is eating a man's head. Yeah, it's really weird where your face is, like, growing out of their neck or yeah. something. It's just, like, really weird. <laughs> yeah. And it just looks terrible in costume. But they have to kind of, like, be a bit more creative about that. Like, I prefer him with, like, a little horn in his, like, actual head. Yeah, or, like, when um when they do, like, uh, other versions of him. Like, for instance, in the Ultimate Comics universe, his costume is kind of more metallic. Yeah. And also, like... And he's got this visor over his eyes. Um, so it's a little bit better because it's a bit more like a Batman thing where it's just the mouth showing but with this version of him it's his whole face so it's different he looks like a an egg it's it's really stupid it's like they forgot they have to, have to breathe like, oh shit got a hole in his head so he can actually breathe <laughs> oh yeah yeah that makes more sense shit <laughs> 
that's an issue anyway. <laughs> uh, away from Rhino's bladder and uh, back to the issue. Yeah. Um, Spider-Man uh, finds him, attacks him, but is able to sort of dodge all his attacks. So Rhino's like, well, I'll just like fuck up other people until you try and actually fight me. Yeah. So he attacks police and blows up a truck, Thank which fuck. like that is about to like basically kill Spider-Man, but Spider-Man's saved by a policeman. Oh, shit. Uh, but Spider-Man finds like a little piece of his like second skin left behind. Anyway. He goes to get help from Kurt Connors, aka the lizard, lizard, or used to be the lizard. Now he's just like a regular science man. The artist formerly known as the lizard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he just like gives him the stuff like, "Oh, right, what can we do with this? Let's figure out what this is made of." Oh, does he go as Peter or does he go as Spider-Man? He goes as Spider-Man. Okay. He always goes as Spider-Man unless there's no relationship between him and peter in this universe oh really no because again in the show like yeah he works with him and stuff but he's only had altercations with uh spider-man in this okay so he goes and he gets some help from him and at which point kurt comes is like do you think the lizard could fight the rhino and spider-man's like <laughs> no, no. <laughs> fucking awful idea the lizard has kind of a like, kind of weird like inferiority complex like Oh, you sure? <laughs> yes. But the, the best part is that Spider-Man says, uh, that's not a good idea. And he goes, then back to the test tubes. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in the lab, friend. Yeah, like a huge crazy monster would be really helpful right now. Yeah, that's what we need. But um, during this whole thing, like mm-hmm. Rhino thinks that Spider-Man's dead now because of the explosion. Yeah. John Jameson is in the hospital after being like, uh, beaten up by Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, that's, that'll do it, that's it. Yeah. yeah. And he goes to a, take Jameson again, but Spider-Man rides, webs him up, goes to like fight him outside, but then he realizes this is a new type of webbing he's made that dissolves his like um, his rhino skin. Ah, uh, okay. And then uh, Spider-Man just like knocks him out in a punch and leaves him like naked, just <laughs> on the front lawn of this hospital <laughs> for the police to arrest him. Um, yeah, and um, I remember like I have read further issues with Rhino. But when I was looking, rereading some stuff for this, I was like, wait, how does he get the suit again? Like, because he does turn up again, but they actually just completely ridded him off the suit. Yeah. Um, but when he next turns up, it's just ridiculous. And he next turns up in The Incredible Hulk. What? Yeah, he actually becomes a Hulk villain for like a little while before he comes back to Spider-Man. It actually a lot of these... makes a lot more sense. Yeah, yeah. And if you're thinking of like, you're looking at a lineup of like, oh, who can we have the Hulk fight? It's like, fight this, put the Rhino yeah, in yeah. there. Um, and they, they do this sort of stuff as well like uh, Sandman becomes a Fantastic Four villain yeah, for like that. for like a, a while yeah. and then you know they dip in and out uh, in the same way that like Kingpin actually is very very heavily a Spider-Man villain but he's only. known like cinematically as Daredevil then yeah because later on he ends up going into Daredevil comics as well and then he ends up fitting the Daredevil comics a bit more I guess so they yeah, so, sure. they, so they ended up just like yeah, no, he, no, you think of him as like one of Daredevil's like key villains, whereas he's very much a Spider-Man villain. He's very much a Spider-Man, but Spider-Man has so many good villains he can afford to kind of let them out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like okay, yeah, you haven't got many. Yeah, DD. I want Doctor Octopus and Venom. You can like have these guys. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I won't go into this too much. But the way he gets his suit back is that the same scientists come up to him again. <laughs> uh, I don't know why uh, these spies like want to want to help, but they're like, oh, we got another suit. This time it's more powerful. It won't melt this time. He has to do something for them. But in exchange for us giving you this back, which doesn't really seem like a gift, because it's a suit he can't take off anymore. So peeing's off the table again. Yeah, well, he he had a few months of peeing, like, while he was in prison. But now that's done. And this new suit was made with gamma radiation. It has to be involved somewhere. It's yeah. the 60s, I mean. Yeah, and then they're like, oh, uh, we need some help with this gamma stuff, so... Can you uh, kidnap Bruce Banner for us? Because that would be pretty helpful. Yeah. I think this is back in the time when no one knew that Bruce Banner was the Hulk. Because that's a whole thing that runs for like 100 issues of like no one knowing. And it's a big reveal. That, that, actually, like, that big rage yeah, everyone suspecting thinks that Bruce Banner is like a spy for ages because like he <laughs> he would like just disappear and then turn up, you know, in the middle of like like a, a like a soviet base yeah. <laughs> and just like what's going on is because the hulk was fucking people up yeah. but at this point he goes to kidnap bruce banner obviously that doesn't go well it kind um, of pisses bruce banner off i guess yeah and the hulk fights him and the hulk beats him up so bad he, put, <laughs> he puts him into a coma 
They should have seen that coming. <laughs> <laughs> Knew the power set. They were like, yeah, the Hulk is so outclasses him that he just yeah. like, puts him in a coma. And that's the end of the Rhino in terms of his origin stuff. There's uh, plenty more crazy bullshit to come. Plenty more head injuries to come. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, that's the end of his like main origin stuff. And I kind of liked how they did it in the episode. You know? Yeah, just like a very quick origin story, like in and out, straight away. And it's very... It doesn't kind of detract from the story. Just like yeah. a guy who can fight as he realises what's going on with himself. And also, if you find out that these people gave him this suit and they did this to him to make him it's all like pretty standard super villain origin stuff yeah so like you might as well just like skip over it you yeah. know especially when you've already done like your scorpion episode and stuff like that oh, it's a very similar kind of idea yeah and you can just run with it and be like oh this guy's a rhino guy sure um, let's go with it yeah well, it makes perfect sense that's the rhino for you yeah let's uh, go into some of these origins of the the suit the black suit yeah as we know it right as now it. the alien costume yeah, it's it's a it's a weird uh, weird origin with this. Basically, there's a big event. It's basically the pretty much the first or at least one of the most landmark Marvel comic events, which later went on to being like stuff like Civil War and Secret Invasion and all these big storylines where characters cross over. Yeah. One of the big ones was one called Secret Wars, which is like a cross between like Secret Invasion and Civil War. Yeah, but happening like thirty five yeah. years before. Yeah. Uh, and basically it's quite complicated but there's a guy called the Beyonder who is this like extra dimensional being who okay. grabs a bunch of Marvel heroes and a bunch of Marvel villains and puts them on this alien planet and basically says whoever wins I will like grant you whatever you want and it's basically all a big reason for them to all team up and fight each other on the planet but then dr doom's there and galactus is there and it gets pretty crazy in terms of like because like the whole thing is like they're all fighting each other and trying to to win the day whereas dr doom's like who's this beyonder guy i'm gonna try and steal his power (laughs) like immediately and like fucks off and uh, it's quite interesting big finger dr doom yeah yeah but eight issues into this series Spider-Man and the rest of the team are all pretty beaten up from a big battle they've had. Alien technology just left on this planet, like these big buildings that are desolate. In their headquarters, Spider-Man sees four go into a room and come out with a repaired costume. So he goes to do the same, but he doesn't know what machine it is. So he just goes up to a random one, like, I think this is it. And he puts like the uh, this helmet thing onto his head, which like scans his body. Okay. And then out of... Uh, out of this like little slot, like just this black ball comes out. Okay. Like a little, what's it called? Like a squash ball. <laughs> no, I mean like those machines, like, like a, a like machine. like a vending machine. It just like pops out, and he just like goes, oh okay, grabs it, and this black thing like immediately spreads all over him. Yeah. Covers him head to toe, and now he's just got a black suit with like the white spider on it. Yeah. And that's how he gets the suit, and then he immediately like. Uh, realizes that he has like unlimited webbing and it can transform into civilian clothes it doesn't tear he feels more agile and stuff um yeah. he has this for a few issues in this miniseries before he they head back to this base and everyone's going to use the machine to repair their costumes again and he sees them using a different machine uh. and uh they don't know what he's talking about when he talks about his machine but he he just lives with it it's probably fine Eh, just like it's probably fine so he heads back and the first issue of his series where he's wearing it is the amazing spider-man 252 where he he gets back to earth he's wearing this new suit and just in this issue he's sort of having a great time with it basically uh where he is he realizes he can just like store his wallet in it because it just like swallows it up yeah and he can you know turn into civilian clothes and like stuff like when he's in bed and he's like, mm, I might go as Spider Man, and it just like crawls over to him and covers him up. Oh, that's really cool. And it's like very, very convenient. Also, one thing I will say, we'll go into more of this origin like in the in the later episodes. Yeah. But there's a whole thing in he has this costume for like a few issues, and uh, the whole thing of the two costumes fighting over him in the dream sequence of this episode actually yeah. comes from the comics. Ah. Where there's a front cover um, of the Amazing Spider-Man 258 
uh, where it's the two costumes fighting over him having the tug of war. Yeah. And I believe this dream sequence is also in the comic, but they do spruce it up in the show where they're actually like smashing through buildings and uh, it's a lot more epic. And um, also, uh, we'll see this saga unfold and you know how the the suit will eventually like show itself to be not so nice. Yeah, less than what it seems. Yeah. That is actually wasn't the original plan. Oh, right. It wasn't really like there to be... I mean, it's, there's a bit of like uncertainty with this, but as far as those initial issues go, apparently the idea was they just wanted to give him a new suit. And so they found an excuse to give him this fancy new suit, which... Yeah presumably makes it easier to write these stories uh, but also it's just a fun new gimmick of it like he looks different and he has unlimited webbing and he can transform into his clothes and like there's like a way of just changing the stories up a bit yeah um but apparently like a lot of the fans didn't really like it oh really and i'm not sure if that was the design it can't have been the design really because i think the design is really cool but i think people weren't happy with like that extra sci-fi thing maybe it was less relatable for him to do that kind of thing to making things too easy for him so then they sort of made it make him evil. Yeah, and uh, and started developing this into something else. But how how far that went uh, is unclear. Like maybe it was just a Secret Wars thing. They were like, "Oh, let's do this," and then pretty straight away, people were like, "Oh, we don't like this." And they're like, oh, "Okay, well then let's develop the story in this." Way. Okay, because yeah, like the back suit is kind of like one of those things we say like, "Oh yeah, this is a cool suit of Spider Man." It's kind of tied into like the Venom marketing and all that as well. So it's kind of interesting that people didn't like it. So yeah, yeah. I think that must have come from the way it interacted in the story. Yeah, and that's, uh, and, and that's as far as we'll go with that one. So yeah, I think that might be it for the episode. I don't know if I see everything's to add. No, not really. I mean, I think I, I was quite surprised that this like worked out as well as it did. I feel like as far as this this three-part series is going so far, mm-hmm. they seem to be like taking what works about this story and finding a really concise way to do it which yeah. I kind of appreciate and it's also kind of making me wonder like why they couldn't have done this at some point in the uh, in the movies in some no. way I think well the studio kind of wanted to rush Venom didn't they and that's why it kind of went down the way it did because they yeah. really wanted Venom to be in the movie yeah and I think that's what makes Venom good is this build up I don't, I don't think the actual suit itself in terms of like venom's abilities and venom's like all that stuff to me is just like kind of interesting like it's okay but yeah. then like when you have this history to it and like the connection to spider-man it becomes really interesting it's like a jilted lover effectively yeah and that's but, what make the character interesting rather than the fact that like, oh it's spider-man but he's kind of more badass there's a whole like marvel cinematic universe thing where like all the villains would just be like an enhanced version of the hero and it got boring I think as like a, like a villain motivation by itself, it's just kind of a bit meh. But here mm. they've kind of subverted that in a really interesting way. Well, in the comics at least, and in the animated series, hopefully. Well, yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. This is a really good setup, but um, we'll have to see whether they pull it off in uh, part two and part three. Part two and part three, yeah, which are coming up, true believers. But yeah, that might be the end of the episode, Jack. Yeah, man. So yeah, well, remember everybody. If you're going to be a rhino person, make sure you get like a nice side job because the rhino gigs are very, very few and far between. That's been episode 8 of That Night Spider-Man Show. Thanks for tuning in. Follow us on social media. You know where to find us. Send us emails. Send us a couple of tweets. Whatever you want to do. But yeah, that's been us. Once again, yeah. Hope you enjoy the episode and we'll see you next time. Please go about your lives. No, seriously, please. Go about your lives. <laughs>